All right, so it, awesome. if you've been around kids, you've been to camps, you see the the effect that Steph Curry has had on the youth of America. So Jalen, other guys in the league, like how do they view a guy like Steph Curry, as popular as he is, and what he's been able to do? First and foremost, you gain respect from the players by being able to perform, and he's obviously done that. And I'm always impressed by NBA players and celebrities for that matter who juggle so many things. Being a celebrity, trying to be good at their craft, and I've said this about LeBron and CP3 too. For Steph Curry, for public consumption, we get a chance to see him be a son, a husband, a dad, and a brother. Hmm. Okay, so for him to be able to juggle all of that and still play in an MVP championship level is really impressive. Yeah, it is. I'm not surprised at all by the story. I mean, Steph Curry is just one of the most humble guys I've ever met. I mean, one of my best experiences <clears throat> in the NBA was playing in the World Championships in 2010. Steph was on the team. He wasn't this Steph, but obviously he was already a great player. He was on the team, but he's the same guy. I mean, and I got a chance to spend a lot of time with him, and, and he's a super-duper star now, but doesn't have that kind of <laughs> ego, right? And, he, and the reason why they're so great is because he empowers everybody to just be who they are, and it's all fueled by Steph Curry. You know, when I, when I sit here and I watch him do interviews, I believe him, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. like, no, seriously. Yeah. There's a lot of guys you, you see do certain interviews, it's like, you know, he's just saying that for the camera, mm -hmm. you know, just what the people want to hear. When he speaks, I believe him. To his teammates, he seems likable, dependable, and, you know, when the Warriors go through their things, their spats, I feel like he's the guy, you know, he's the mediator, and I think that's how everybody off the court and on the court view him. I don't know who wants to go first on this, but when was it, that you realized the influence you had as an NBA star? What, what happened? As an NBA star? Yeah. Um, I think probably very early on. I mean, um, you know, probably my rookie year for me. When was you your know? first autograph? Or when did you give your first autograph? I was like 14 years old. What? Yeah. Damn, you, Who's that, asking you for that? You was, damn, you was that good, Charles? Yeah, I was that nice. <laughs> I was that nice, Paul. I never heard of you until you were 17. Well, I mean, wow. you know, I mean, you, you know. took some of these buckets too, but don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, all I'll say is about Paul. That's wrong. You know, he was at Kansas, I was at Colorado. They played a box and one against me every mm -hmm. time, but guess what? They put the whole box on me, not the one guy. They put <laughs> the whole Johnson, box on all me. All Americans, high school, all Americans. That's all right. High school, all Americans didn't go to Colorado. You did. Yeah, I was about to say, one of us did. <laughs> you did. One of us did. But anyway, <laughs> I signed my first autograph, and it was a humbling, humbling experience. I was 14 years old. Wow. And what was so humbling about it really was, like, the people that asked, asked for it were, like, 18, 19. What? And so at that point, you know, I was, like, blown away, you know, because I'm used to, I'm, I'm going to the Nuggets games asking for autographs. Right. Now I'm giving one at, I'm a freshman in high school. So at that point, I knew, like, I got to, you know, be a little different when I'm out in the public, you know? I think mine's was, when I realized my influence, it had to be after my rookie year, you know, being a kid from Inglewood. When I went back to my old high school and I start, started throwing basketball camps, and that's when you started seeing the kids come up to you, ask for autographs or pictures, you know, kids that was from my neighborhood, and they were like, you know, he made it, you know, so maybe I can be that kid that can make it next. And, and that's when I realized, you know, the influence I had, you know, as an NBA player in my community. But you haven't changed how you act in public. We'll get that. What community? What community? Um, so is, he talking yeah. about, is he talking about the Boston community he's from? Or, or, or he's born or in Oakland. Oakland, Oakland. Or, oh, okay, <laughs> Inglewood. My, my I started my to bad. learn the influence I had. I went to a basketball powerhouse, Detroit Southwestern, led by Perry Watson. So if you got a chance to participate on that team, and we won city championships, PSL, state championships, that made you a star. We were the number one team in the country my a junior squad year. Too. We were undefeated. Voshan Leonard and Howard Isley were my teammates. And then I got a chance to go to the University of Michigan and be a part of the Fab Five. And so that level of influence that we had, it was, it was outstanding. And the most humbling thing that has ever happened for me, and this happens all of the time, I say this respectfully, people come up to me all of the time and tell me they named their son or daughter after me and or know someone that did. And for those that don't know, my mother made that name up. <laughs> my biological yep. father's name is James. My uncle Leonard took her to the hospital to give birth. So that's where the name came from. I love that good story. story. That's a good yeah, story. Yeah, it's a good story.